never be a So Solid ever again. Celebrity crush from So Solid crew, Harvey! You could be around politicians, but you're still gonna have that same... Harry, kill me to stop me, bro. When we're dead, the tunes will still play. <laughs> what would it have been like releasing music now compared to back in the day? This is what I'm gonna try and explain to you, right, yeah? Obviously, you started playing football when it halves. To be fair, you were like, What was the hardest times? And then the taxman came for me for 400 grand. I didn't even have that much bank, blood. I was like, oh, no! Partless crew better than you, innit? <laughs> Do you know what's mad? That's mad. Bushkin just texted me too. <laughs> Bushkin just... Bushkin texted me 10 minutes ago. I'm going to tell him he's off. I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, like, obviously, you started playing football at half, so... Yes. And you... To be fair... He's a baller. Yeah? He's a baller. Yeah, Man's got, he's got, he's got, he's he got a decent, he's got a decent left peg, in it. He's got a decent left peg as well. He knows. Up and down, he loves yeah. his training. We've got, we've got but a yeah, No, Harv, I think, you know, I think you've spoken to a lot of people, but obviously our audience is a bit different because yeah, this is predominantly a, a golf pod show that yeah, we've, we've started. But, you know, tell, I tell everyone your story because you came from the streets. Yeah. You know, you started as a footballer. Um, things didn't work out in that way, yeah. and then you turned to music. So for me, when I look at your life, even though you had knockbacks, you always had that positivity in your mind. Yeah, yeah man, just sh like tell us, bro. Bro, I got this mentality. You gotta kill me to stop me, bro. You understand? And I think with a new modern day kid, they don't deal with rejection very well. Yeah, I think they do. The new youths, they're built, they're built differently. They're, with no disrespect, they're not as tough as us. I come from a. My father was in the navy, bro. Mm. So the discipline was there from the beginning. My mum's a tough mixed race woman that was raised in Cardiff, Wales. But she was also a good template for me. Yeah. Perseverance. Anything that you do, you've got to persevere. Like, Rome wasn't built in a day. No one said it was going to be easy. So if you're talking about the football route, we all knew we were signing up for, Jay. Yeah. At, at, at that time, obviously, you was, you was slightly younger than me. We, all of us was at academies. Me, you, Clinton Morrison, Sean Davis, Hayden Mullins. This is all our group of friends. Yeah. Graham Stacks, you know what I mean? Yeah. Bunch of talent. But it doesn't necessarily say that at the time we all joined the academies, we was all going to reach the the higher level. That's what I always say. Like to you. When we've spoken Hayden's to before, like I was saying, yeah. the, the the people that we was growing up around. I mean, even even now, like you don't really see that because clubs will take you away from that That's early, correct. right? They will put you with a family and say, correct. go and live in digs. Put you in digs. But yeah. back in the day, it was like, boy, you had to just like learn on. You had to make learn on the work. go. You had to make make it work. Make it work. Literally. Yeah. Literally. You know, and that's why I was. That's why I always say, you know, this show is a golf show, but. I love people's story. Yeah, and yeah, for yeah. me, you've got a powerful story. That's why I wanted you to come yeah, on, man, because powerful. when standing. I hear you, you inspire me still. I got goose pimples, bro. Yeah, it's mad. Yeah, but I got goose pimples. I'm telling you, you inspire me sometimes yeah, by the thing mad. you say. And I'm like, and this guy's still doing things to at yeah. this day, and he's still like moving forward. And I admire that. I admire anyone yeah. that's doing well in there. Every so solid member. When yeah. I look at the boys now, and I think, you know. I've got the Team Harvey brand also, you know, I've got the agency where I look after players that are, that are playing in the league and Working in London. Working various charities. And various charities. And, and then I look at, like, what Mega's doing, with, like, with his clothing brand sheets and thieves and what he's doing behind the scenes of music. Romeo, like, is now nearly going to be a fully qualified pilot, bro. Like, yeah. What the For real? What the yeah. hell? Bro, hey, if he's working on that airline, no, I ain't flying. I'm not, I'm not getting on it. I'm not getting on it. But really, when, when he comes on and says, oh, no, yeah, that's the right air beach. Oh, no, to your death, isn't it? But, um... <laughs> This is what the people, what everyone's doing. Um, Lisa Mafia with, with her house of Mafia fashion brand, Ashley Waters with the acting stuff. I mean, growing up around a bunch of talented individuals, man. And they, what it was, everyone ain't just put their eggs in one basket. Listen, we sold eight million records. There was, there will never be a so solid ever again. All the artists that you're watching now, we are responsible for that. We took the risk when we was doing it. It was dangerous. There wasn't no CCTV out is now, and you're all protected. Now, nah, bro, this was real stuff. We're going into the same. When we was number one in the charts, we done top of the pops. I remember when you do top of the pops back in the day. Right. Yeah, he's too young. Yeah, but when you do oh, top of the pops junk. back in the day, you made it. You know. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. You made it's it. A What's that like now? Then? Because you're on. It's not on. even there now. But it's, it's like there. TV. It's, it's not even there no more. Chris Carey, man, yeah. the producer of Top of the Pops, because he just he just like believed in us and was a big fan. And that we was number one. We done top of the pops in the afternoon. And then nighttime, we was in a club in Manchester called Havana, the original gangster club. <laughs> How many men that you know is number one in the charts will be in them clubs after just doing top of the pops? Yeah, yeah. We was number one in the national ch charts. This club is a proper gangster. I've been gangster. there. You know, I've been there. You know been that there. Club, yeah, yeah. You I didn't feel safe in there. Yeah, <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Peak. So the, like, the risk that we had to take, the danger that we was around at that time. Remember, we didn't have anyone to share it with. Like these new rappers, they got like, you know, all their other peers. Entourage. Entourage, whatever. Yeah. But it, we was the most talked about 
group in England. After Heartless, not, though. Yeah, no chance. No, after chance. Heartless. no chance. <laughs> Heartless was good on a rave level. But they, 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 no, no, no. They, you you, know you set the bar, to be fair. Oh, I watched that Heartless documentary. He, was, I, he made me watch that documentary. Yeah. Um, the one where it's... Um, it's called, like, it's, it, it's got, it's like a five-part series and, like, how, how music and... England yeah, evolved, oh, yes, yes. and you guys, you guys are in one. It's yeah, grind, well, yeah. and it's like, yeah, it's mad. I'll tell you the biggest one to me was the one. It was when it was most like the most influential people in music, and it was hosted by Idris Elba. I didn't see and that yeah, one. it was mad. And then the top ten, like we was the only British group in the top ten. This was in the world, and Idris put Levels us in that. that and I was like, whoa. Because I remember, do you know what the yeah. thing was? I think we're so solid. What was really good for you, lot? It's weird actually, because we're professional footballers, right? Yeah. And I see so solid come out. I was, wow, these guys are moving. Green TTs and yeah, all these yeah, stuff. Cash, bro. Well, I was like, wow, I'm like, I need to get one of these, bro. Because yeah. then I go into the clubs and, you know, back in the day, the girls were all around me. And then back in the day, we were, we were in fashion, bro. Light skinned guys. We're in fashion now. Yeah. In fashion now. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, and then it was like, all of a sudden, So Solid came in the club and it was like, everyone just gravitated to you guys. Yeah, man. It, was just, was... it was just weird. Like, but I think you've done well for urban England. Yeah, 100%. As in, you know, you may, you you guys were like, I mean, even people talk about Wiley being the godfather of, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he came after you lot. Yeah. You know, so it's well, like, he really. He was doing drum and bass around them times, you know? Yeah. He, I, yeah, he was called Wiley Cat or something. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But I would give you the history of people's names before they was artists. Like, people don't realise, do you remember there was a garage tune that used to go bounce, but bounce with it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember, uh, it's the uh, mega MC, get yeah. with it. That's the nail. Really? <laughs> no, no one knows that. Really? So Deneo was called Mega MC when he was trying to bust and no one... Oh, Dene I didn't know that. So you don't know that, do you? Yeah, I didn't Dene know that. made that tune. And that's what I always got to go. Now, Deneo is a don, you know? And that tune used to mash up garage raves. Do you know what I mean? It was kind of that same yeah, kind that of was, whole sex type of sound. Everyone's on the dance floor at that time, just yeah. like... The impact of So Solid will that... I mean, it was genius, bro. I remember, like, the, our first year of being successful, um, DJ Khaled invited us, to, and him and Westwood brought us to Miami. I was just gonna say, did you yeah. touch the states? Or yeah, yeah, like, loads yeah. of times, bro. So like, we've gone to the um, gone to Miami and that. So we've done DJ Khaled show. We, Khaled took us to his party. We're rolling with all them guys, Miami guys. And I'm walking down Collins Avenue, me and the Trina, and D12, yeah, like but bizarre proof in that they're walking on the other side of the road, and I'm just like, I'm like, that's D12. And then man, this way, what I heard was so solid. This me, yeah. the f like, <laughs> <laughs> and then proof's like, yo, do you know what I mean? I'm like, this is mad. And what was what was mad when we got back around that time when we got we got back to England we ended up supporting Eminem, so That's we spent wicked. time in Eminem. I was like these men know us, and the fact is there was no rapper that could come in the country and not get a clearance from So Solid, bro. And is that real? Regardless, because Fifty knew he, he, you know you have to get the part the bus pass, bro, because they knew how serious Usher knew how serious we was when he came over. He said when we won the mobile, he's like this is their town. Yeah. What was you thinking then when he started getting recognised? All these mad. Mad. Yeah. I think the best one, forget the rappers, yeah? Like D12, I love Eminem. But I remember, it's like, I was walking in top of the pops, yeah? And like, Nelly Furtado, like, grabbed my hand, like, oh, you're like my favourite group. I'm like... Yeah, what? Like, this weird people. Yeah, like, and she's a, she's a hottie. And come now, on, like, she, she come on, she's beautiful. Like, yeah, yeah. she loved us. And then seeing, um, at the Mobos, I mean, the Brit Awards, when we won the Brit, and then Robbie Williams tapped on my shoulder, like, yo, I love you lot. I'm like, no way. This is Robbie Williams, 80 million records. But when you're so doing it, it's funny because when you're weird. doing it, you don't even realise. You don't know. Yeah, you don't realise. You don't know it. You know that, like, yeah. Jay, it's the same when you play football, isn't it? You yeah. don't know the impact you're having on people. You don't. You know what I mean? So Not until afterwards or someone comes up to you exactly. and says it. It's yeah. like, I was, in a, I was in a meeting yesterday. Big meeting. But yes, you, I called you, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was talking about, you know, people like, I was talking about you, I was talking about Hayden. And then when I heard it, it, these was football guys and the impact that you lot had on these people, especially as black players, the times that you lot played in and the levels that you was hitting. For us, for me to wake up, I used to love Saturdays when I was in So Solid because it'd be like, I'd have a show, I'd be on the tour bus, and it'd be like, well, let me see what the boys are doing. Let me go on Football Focus, <laughs> Jay's school today. <laughs> like, all my boys are playing like Championship, Prem. Did that it inspire was, you though? It was amazing. Keep smashing what you did. It was amazing because it, it went hand in hand, even though, People say, like, I never really felt the rejection from football. Obviously, I felt it when I got released from Barnet, but I still played in the National League anyway. Yeah. I, still, I played for the biggest clubs. I played for all the shit on AFC yeah. Wimbledon. Yeah. So I still knew I could maintain a living. I was still earning yeah. six, seven hundred pounds a week. Yeah. So I knew that, at the worst, I'm going to be playing National League, one yeah. below League Two. So I didn't... Obviously, it was hard, horrible when you get released because there's a horrible feeling. I remember when I got released from Barnet, bro. I'll never forget, I got on a tube from High Barnet 
to um Clapham, to Waterloo, then changed that Clapham Junction. Brother, I was holding the tears. You know, like you feel like yeah. the world's ended. And I got there, and then my stepfather, bless his soul, who was a scout for the area, he's the one that found me, Sean Davis, Clinton. Okay. He's just like, as soon as he put his arm around me at Clapham Junction, brother, I just Bless dropped my head in his shoulders and cried, bro. Because yeah. you think, ah, oh, it's over. But I remember what he said to me. He sat me like, on my, in my bedroom and he was like, listen, it's over. We don't feel sorry for ourselves now. Like, you brush yourself off and we go again. Yeah. And literally, within three days, Woking come in for me. All the shot, All the biggest clubs in London League. Big clubs, man. Big, big clubs. But that's, a, that's what I said Sorry, I admire about you. You're my boy it. and everything, but... Yeah. That's that's. Do you know what the thing is? Like we talk about areas of football and mm. everything now in this society, right? And certain things happened to me back yeah. in the day. If, you, if they happen now, be classed as bullying. That's right. Right. But those situations actually made me mentally strong. Yeah. So I can only imagine what you went through. But then those knockbacks made you the person you are today. Hundred percent. I remember the best one. Yeah, one of the best gaffers that I had. God bless his soul again, Ray Clements. Ray Clements never left. Got the England goalkeeping job. Remember that? Yeah. And left Barnet. I would have been cool. Because he's the one that put me in the first team squad against Wickham. I didn't play, but he put me in the started to get me around it. Yeah. And then when he left, had the worst manager. And I say his name, he's a prick. I say it happily on camera, Terry Bullivant. <laughs> Horrible guy. And so then, that is, bro. That's and what I remember about. he said, um, you're just a cocky kid from South London. I'll never forget that. Man, think of the terminology of what you're saying. Imagine saying that to a kid now. No. You're a cocky kid from South London. What's my area got to do with it? The usual stereotypical things to say about a young black boy. Because what it is, we don't take their shit. And we don't allow them to bully us. That was my problem. Do you understand? I mean, even you when I was yeah, younger. you know. You just had to grab a few times like we was in... Yeah, you <laughs> know. Yeah, I want to ask how you two first met, actually. Ah, uh, Jay's always been my boy, man. <laughs> yeah. I always like this guy. Because he's a hothead like me. <laughs> and you see with Jay, we got light skin syndrome. Right? <laughs> so you see light skin syndrome, yeah? It's like, people try to take you for a dickhead. But they don't realise how digi we are. Like, you speak to any of the boys that are so solid, they're going to be like, Harvey's tapped, bruv. He's the one you got to watch out. Harvey went on on the bar, and bottles are like, he's a lovely guy, but once he goes... Yeah, gone. And because they, they like to push us, don't they? And back in the day, because you're popular with the ladies, people want to do you, do you things. Like, when I got, bro, when I got stabbed, the guy was going for my face, bro. Like, why can't you just turn and stab my body or something? Like, <laughs> yeah. man went for my neck, bro, you know what I mean? Like, well, he went for my face, and because I turned like that, it was my neck. It's, it's funny you can have that you know joke I mean? about that now, but that's yeah. serious oh, at terrible, the time. Bro. That's... I nearly died, four hour yeah. operation. But I think like the spitefulness, and I remember like, I used to see it, the hate, you know, when you walk into a room that you used to feel. Like, I remember like them days, you got to think like, you got like Harvey, Hayden Mullin, Jay Buff, all sweet boys, like Hazel, like, like <laughs> these, are, these are boys' nightmares. You know that's what I mean? That's like, what I'm saying, like, because you're yeah. successful, yeah. And, you, and, you, and you're a good looking boy, and it's like, yeah. all of a sudden you go there and, <laughs> It's like people will just like try and nudge you, try and like yeah. take advantage of you. But for me, like I yeah. said, like for me, I, w I grew up in a bad area, right? Yeah. So for me, it was like, okay, I look a certain way, but people didn't know me, so they'll try and take advantage of yeah. that. Yeah. And he was, Jay was the same. He was, he was like cool, but he's reactional. Yeah. And I think that's why I related to him because I knew that he had a good heart. That's why I mean, he's always been good friends. And Jay, what I like with Jay, even to now, me and him have it out on messages, but he's real. Yeah. And that's, that's why right. I love him. That's why I mean, and we don't take nothing personal. We know we're boys. You know what I mean? And I like a, a true friend, you can tell each other the truth. You know what I mean? And you can have Jay, that bit. Jay's the only man that can come on the phone and be like, all right, let me give you constructive criticism. <laughs> I've booked you, I've booked you, this week he me two weeks ago. I was like, what do I say to this, yeah? He went, I booked you three weeks ago to get mega. I'm like, Jay's not my fault. He's telling me like he's my dad. But because I love him, he can yeah, tell me like it, that. You get it, you get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's my brother in it. He knows but I love look, him. Bro, I flew back from LA early for him. Yeah, and I can't, to come like, to his game. I can't say nothing to him because his loyalty and likewise, I can't ever question him. And he knows the same. Like, anyone troubled him, bro? Yeah, it's a headache for you, bro. Because <laughs> he's, he, he's an extended member of So Solid. You know what I mean? So if you trouble him, like, you've got problems, bro. You know, I showed, you know yeah. I showed him on, on that documentary, I was trying to tell him, because obviously it's a different era of, like, when we was going out, he was, like, really happy, yeah, dancing, man. and everything yeah. like that. And it was a nice vibe, Napa. It was wicked. Like, everything was wicked. You go to a club now, and it's, like, pretentious. Yeah, everyone, that everyone's looking like... Do you know what's it, unheard of to me now? Like, in our day? So, you know, like back in our day, we'd go twice as nice. Yeah? There'd be footballers in there, gangsters in there. But Everyone. Not, but you just want to have a good time. You just have to, like, the gangsters love you. They, they, like, everyone's just getting on. Like, they're like, that's cool. Because the gangsters would be like, I'm a gangster, he's a baller. He, he, they're not in our world. So, but now, you, footballers, they're going out, they're getting robbed, they're getting targeted outside nightclubs. It's crazy. Like, you know what I mean? My friend said to me on Saturday, he laughed, he went, bro, I went to London. I was in the West End. And I've seen, I've seen the signs now around the West End. Do not wear your watch. Oh, yeah, watches, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. What? I know, I you know. You get me? Serious. And you're actually mad, bro, actually weird about that. 
yeah? I got, bro, I got 10K of jewelry in my bag now. Jay knows my chains. Shout out mad. When I got, I'm on a tube. Took my chains off, bro. Yeah. You know why? Because don't make yourself a target for no reason. It's a different world we live in. Because yeah. you see now, you walk around the West End, you got people, look out guys, watching you. Yeah. They're waiting for footballers outside clubs. They're targeting people with jewelry. They're targeting your watches. You come out here now, someone's watching you now. You got a box clever out here. I'm 44 and I know that. It's true. You know what I'm saying? Hundred percent. So my life ain't worth no jewels, bro. So I just took the jewels off, put them in my bag. We were talking about. I've got kids, bro. I need to go home to my kids. You get me? We were talking so, about a football recently, innit? Yeah. And we were saying that, like, but these these people, like, you can live in a nice yeah. life. For for example, I live in North London, right? But where I live is is nice. Yeah. But then ten minutes away Boom is real. it t Tottenham, Tottenham, right? People ain't robbing. Tottenham gangsters ain't robbing people in Tottenham. Nah, They're mate. coming to my area. They, they right? And I'm saying, if you're going to go around showing your jewel, you best have a good people, a good people around you that are going to fight your corner. Literally. Or you're going to get robbed. When we're on the road, like I said, you know, we got the goons. I got, Jay knows my security team, but you also got, you got to be a wise man out here because yeah, the world's different. Wise, yeah. And what I see a lot of the young rappers and footballers going through now, it's horrific, bro. Is it because it is so much that social media world they're trying it's to show media. off and be out Yeah, and it's because they can see that. how they're living. Yeah. You know, you, for example, you go on Instagram, and I see, like, my good friend, Sanford Gatler, that's right, Wilf, Wilfred Saha, yeah. yeah? And I bumped, in, I bumped into Wilf the other day when I was done a show in Dubai. Uh, but they, they don't know how well, hard I'm not sure about worked. that. I'm, I have to say, I think I love Wilf. I'm not sure about that, mate. I think, I think he's a good, good, I think he's a very good yeah. player. Galatasaray? I would have went Lazio. I don't understand so, yeah. why he went in there. Anyway, we'll come back yeah. to that. Go on. But is they, they, people see like private jet, all this, and they don't realise how hard the kids work. That kid's come from nothing, bro. Yeah. And he's the most humble kid you'll meet. But, you know, oh, look at him. He thinks... Because they don't know the full story, do they? Because, you know, people... People, people, Trey, people, so see, people to... see... People see the lifestyle now, but they don't see the hard work initially. They don't see it at all. That's the thing. Yeah. People just look at things like music or football or golf, and they just say, you know what? I want to be a golfer because I can be a millionaire. Back in the day, if you said to me, why you want to be a footballer? I love the game. Exactly. Now it's like people, I want to be a footballer because I can be a millionaire. I can drive what I want. I can go. go where I want. It's different, different now. Isn't it? yeah. And the, go the goals ain't the same. Like We're seeing it now with all the Saudi Arabia deals. Yeah. Like, you know... You get 700 grand a week, you're off in Jordan, Jordan Henderson. All these crazy, stupid wages. Crazy. It's not about football no more, is it? It's like, it's about money. And like, there's literally now, I'm looking at it now, I'm going, everyone can be bought. And then I look at it, the only real person to me in the last couple of weeks that showed some class was Saka, when the Saudi Arabia came from him. And he said, what message would that give to kids if I went now? I That's wicked. And Saka went, I haven't won nothing. Yeah. Yeah, what a, what a kid. I said, remember, that... I said, I could tell you about African parents, you know? Yeah. Because he's on 180 bags a week. How much more money does he need at 23 years old? He's going to get that check anyway in six years' time. He can go and get it, yeah. He can go and get it. The only thing is, I would say, the yeah. Mbappe, though. I mean, we spoke about it earlier, but I think when you're looking at them types of moves, you've got to be, like, 30s. 30s, I understand. Or, like, if, you know, like, if you're, like, one of those players that... Say, like, if you're... So like if you're at Fulham or someone like yeah. that, and you know you're not probably going to win something. Yeah, agreed. Then, yeah. Like, so, a, so like, like a Mitrovic. Yeah, Mitrovic. Yeah. See, like Mitrovic, I'll yeah. be doing the same thing as him. 100%. Let me go, bro. Let me go. Because that is some serious... That's like generational he's at that wealth. Age. He's at that, that age, age right? Play, agreed, Jay. All the players that have gone there, agreed. Like, they're all over the 30. Firmino, Hend yeah. like, even Henderson. Yeah. I'm a Liverpool fan. I'm gutted because I wanted another year out of him because he's such an influence in the dressing room. He drives the players. Regardless that he's not going to play all the time, but how can you talk to Henderson at mid-30s who's won every trophy? He's won the Champions League, he's won the Premier League, he's won the FA Cup, he's won the League Cup. Good to have around. And you're offering him 700 bags to secure his family say it, fully. Yeah. What? I can't, I've got to be like, Henderson's, yeah. Hendo's my mate. When I see Hendo, I'll be like, bro, well done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. well that's done. the thing. You can't people, question people, his dedication. You know the thing is, people, it's funny because in football, fans especially would be like, I can't believe he's doing that, I can't believe he's leaving Liverpool. Yeah. Like, there's some fans out there. But then you look at it and say, well, bruv, like, if someone said to you, here's that amount of money, bro, what are you going to do? Bro, my mate's an architect and he's moving to Saudi in two weeks. He's not even a footballer. And the P's, oh, obviously, I won't disclose what they're paying him. I said, bro, get on the plane. Yeah. yeah. Get on the plane. I don't care if you can't drink. Get on the plane. Real, bro. Sacrifice beer for a year and a half, bro. <laughs> can't get that money. <laughs> Can I come? I'll make the coffees <laughs> in your office. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the funny thing, this is actually quite weird, because we was talking about... Me and, me and Wes Daly was talking about Jay yesterday. And we was going... He's actually one of the first players in an era when it wasn't cool to take a risk and go and play abroad. Yeah. Yeah, you said yeah. that in Italy. When he went to Perugia yeah. and when he went to Japan. Yeah. But you see where he was smart? When Jay started to get older, 
when he, this is, this is the Japan move, when I clocked it, I went, well, if he's, his career now is declining, not declining by his ability, declining by his age. So all he's gonna have to do, he's gonna drop down. Jay ain't gonna wanna play League One and be like, and then someone like, I don't know, someone of Steven is offering him four grand a week. And Jay's gonna be like, and he's playing yeah, at the highest nice. level. Yeah. But then he used his brain and went, what if I go to Japan with my profile? I can still play at, play at the highest level at that age and earn better money. But him, yeah. me he watching him play at Crawley, FC, Jay would be like, nah. Don't want to do that, And then but you're going to have some, I know what he's like. 100% right. Yeah, and Jay's going to be 100%. like, having some geezer going, oh, you think you're this because you're Jay, but... Yeah. And then you're going to get some League 2 player trying to smash sure, him every yeah. week. And Jay's going to be going, what am I doing out here? But can I see Jay Buffett and a coach to Hartlepool? No, I cannot, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I cannot. You know, some man could do it. Like, they're playing the highest level and they end their career at Notts down. County. Like, Hayden Mullin said to me, I said, Hayden, when did you know it's over? That's my son's godfather. Hayden said, when I went to Notts County and I seen the ball going over my head for the whole half, he went, it's time to retire. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, that's, what, like, that's what that's what that's what that's what I was speaking to JJ Start earlier. We, we, yeah. we said that I said that same thing. When you see the ball going over nah. your head, bro, forget yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. get the ball down on the yeah. deck. All of us are ballers. That's like taking yeah. chances. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you watch my charity team with these lot in it, we pop it. <laughs> bro, your charity game. You need to come. These charity games are funny. You can't come. No, it's funny, you know, because but when I first when I played in the first one, I thought I'm just gonna turn up and it's gonna be like you know like. All kind of easy Ozzy. Bro, the warm up was there. Man was like, yeah. hey, we're going out for the warm up in 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. All like <laughs> energy, pack, everything. I was, you know it's I good. It's it good. people don't understand. It's a, and I was saying to the boys that so a lot of footballers were suffering with their mental health after retirement. Not everyone is kind of like well put together. Like with you, Jay, you've been through adversity, but you've got a good wife, got a good family foundation. And you're well put together. So you, you people like you, the Haydens, the Clintons, you, you was never like, you didn't let it affect your life. There's got a point you've got to retire. And we all know it's a short-lived career. But some guys that we know that are friends, I won't say their names, but you know, they, they, they were struggling. I've had footballers at the highest level call me like, oh, man, I'm like, yo, this is mad. Like, people have watched these geezers on match of the day and they're struggling because you go from 30,000 people going, yeah, to, yeah. to nothing. Silence. Yeah. And then you're like thinking, what yeah. to do? What See, do I do music, now? The good thing about me, when you're an iconic um, group like So Solid, we can gig until we're 60. Yeah. Because we can still do 21 seconds. We can get honoured. We can do that. You can, come on, man. You've got people like Roger still short, touring. But I thought, short career. Football yeah, short, football like 10, 15 it, years It's ago. a short business. Short window. So I said to myself, sat down with my events manager, Jay Dude, and I said, I need to create this template of ex-pros and play it against other legends because they, the, what they all miss, they miss the camaraderie and the banter. Yeah. But what it is, if they're all traveling, like I've got Jays coming, I've got Gareth Barry's that played, Danny Simpsons, these are all big players that have played. They've got to feel like how when they played. It's proper. Because yeah. when they, if they, when they, some of the boys are ringing games, now they all base the games off of my games. So if they go play another game, they'd be like, this ain't like Harvey's team. I've done that, I've done that. That's yeah, the yeah. thing. Yeah. That's the level. Like, I said, I said, like, I don't want to play in a game yeah. where I need to play in a game where it's competitive. Exactly. Right? I don't want to be playing in a game where it's like, oh, bang over yeah. there. People are like, our games are feisty, bro. Literally. This guy's this guy's trying to punch people up. What are you doing? What are you fucking <laughs> doing? You ain't passing, bro. It's not all but about it's you. Good, though. The passion's great, but I, w I couldn't. Waste their time. Do you know what I was mad the other day? I got the phone call and I couldn't believe yet. <laughs> like, and Aiden said, Wait, Lewis Beaumont is trying to get hold of you. I'm like, I don't like that. <laughs> I'm like, Beaumont is like, Harvey, you don't involve me in none of these games. I'm like, This is the Fulham assistant manager. I'm like, Legend, Portuguese international. Now I've got Beaumont. Wanting to play. Because I've heard. Everyone... He, he, I think he might be on the bench though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he went, he went, and it was the fact that it's all the pros now harass me. Because the first thing they hear is professionalism, the setup, and the quality of the games. Yeah, the quality of the games. They know, Jay's like, when I go there, like, they're proper games, bro. I, I can't, I've been offered games like people, so who's someone offered me to play against some, one of these bait teams, and I said, sorry, I'm not putting my lads through that. You get me? My lads ain't playing it. No, it's, proper, it's a proper setup. That's yeah. why I like doing it. Because, first of all, he's my boy. And if, listen, even if it was shit, I still go for him. Yeah, exactly. It's him. Yeah. But, like, the fact that it's properly set up, you know, they you always get good crowds. Yeah, exactly. Like, even it? afterwards, you know, having it? drinks with everyone. Laugh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We have a laugh, mate. It's proper. Yeah. Like, I mean, listen, if you don't know, yeah, go and check yeah, out Harvey's proper it's, it's games because I, I love them, man. They're good. It's good he, to stay out. These lot of, do you know what I like? What I miss with these lot? Like, when we're all together, we're like a bunch of kids. Yeah. You see <laughs> he everyone, still is. Because he <laughs> everyone misses each other. He just laughs all day yeah. in the dressing room. He laughs and moans. You get me? And the only time he moans, like, keep the ball on the floor. 
Diva. 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 Yeah, yeah. I guess where he plays for me now. Do you, you don't play at top. Maybe he's my centre midfield general. <laughs> midfield general. Yeah. I don't put him up there no more. I put the young boys up there. He's up there. Do you know what? When I'm playing up there, he's up there. He's up. He's far up the pitch. He's a left back. But no. It's good to see, man. And I said, like I said, one thing about football we, we all miss. The, you don't realise they're the greatest days of your life, bro. Like when I lie, sometimes I was in bed the other day, and like I was watching you play all the when they do the classic games on Sky. Oh yeah, yeah Cardiff yeah. when he had his bar led and yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, boy, yeah. And I always go, you see that team with like you and Michael Chopra. Yeah, that team what was. What a team! Our team was Oi. serious. Serious. That team. I remember them times I was in. Social I can't believe like, we didn't get promoted. Oh, that team was a joke. Yeah. That team, that Cardiff team there, and Peter Whitten and bless his soul. Man. When I heard that, do you know what's passed, funny about that? Do you know when I talk about Arsenal to you, when I say we used to turn up and just feel like we used to do that with Cardiff, oh, it was like, a joke. professionally. So we used to turn up, like we used to organise nights out after the game, like because it's almost like I turn up. Yeah, we're gonna beat these. Yeah, we're gonna so beat you're these. You're already arranging. Yeah, we're we're already man. arranging a night out. And that's when Jay had this. When Jay decided to skin his head. I said, like, you know what I mean? He looked like a nutter too. I was like, nah. Yeah, half, half, half. You know yeah. what it was? Like? I'll be honest with you. I'll yeah. be straight with you, bro. There were no barbers up there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm I remember one time, yeah, they tried to, um, Lincoln wanted to sign me, I went up there and they was like, we're going to do the deal. And I looked at this club and the money was awful anyway. And I looked at this, I looked at this town, yeah, and this is me. Nah, man. <laughs> I can't live here. They're telling, can't me, get a trip. they're telling me I've got to live in Boston or Skegness. Nah, uh, man. Skegness. I can't live here. Where am I gonna? What's the nearest place I can get my hair cut? Not in them. Sixty miles. Nah, bro. I'm not driving sixty and miles after trimming. Nah, bro. nah. Who's cutting? Who's trimming my hair in Lincoln? Nah, mate. I, I agreed. So when Jay skid it, I was like, Nah, this is brilliant. But knew that. It's nice, man. I'm proud of all the boys. I'm proud of like what they've all achieved. Even now, when I see like him, Clinton killing the, the punditry and that, because I laugh because I've grown up with Clinton, and I think all that rubbish that you chat. At least it served you well. But it's good for TV, though. Yeah. TV, people don't understand. He, he knows the game, that boy. Oh, you yeah. two know oh, the game, bloody oh. hell. That's what it is, yeah? Yeah. Obviously, I know the game, but do you know what? Like, for people that like to watch football, but they just like to watch it? Yeah. Right? you got to be able to communicate to them so they understand. Right. If I start talking about the technicalities of football, it's boring. Yeah, of course. It's like, it's like everything, I think. Like, he's a pro golfer. Yeah. Like, when you hear that, when he speaks about golf, I'm interested. I'm engaged. Yeah. When other people speak about golf, I'm like, I know you get you get lost. In I it, get though. lost yeah. in it, yeah, yeah. and that's the thing. That's why, like, for me, every time I go on, the best piece of advice, actually, Jermaine Jennings gave me a good piece of advice. Yeah. And then my media coach, um, Richard Kaufman, you, who yeah, you know, Richard, yeah. he said to me, "Just go on and be yourself." That's. He said, well, "When you say all you can do," and he said, it? "Go on there. When you go on, be yourself. Have the have the information that you can back up your arguments. Just be yourself." There you go. Mm. That's simple. And they're the best ones for me. Like, when you see Graham Souness, Roy Keane, that's them. Yeah, that's right. That's them, you know. They're, they're just saying how they feel at that point. You've got... Listen, and the thing is, you don't have earned the right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? If you bring me... Like I said to you, record label bosses will ring me up and be like, Harvey, should we sign them? They'd be like, Mega, should we sign them? Because we've been there, did it, done it. You have mm. to respect the CV, bro. Mm. Like I said... You, you, you see things that we, other people don't see. There you see. go. Eight million yeah. records sold, bro. Because there's some... No, I'm, bro, I'm sorry, I'm sure yeah. now, I'll ask you now, there's, there's, there must be some really, really talented musicians out there, but they don't go over the line because they haven't got that piece of they, ingredient. They, they ain't got it, bro. It's a package, you know? Mm. Like, people always go... You see the good thing about So Solid, yeah? We knew, we knew our roles, and Mega was very, very good at this. He was like, listen, I'm going to sign everyone in this group that serve different purposes. Mm. Now, Harvey and Romeo are the TV guys. They bring in the females. <laughs> so that's their corner. Ash has got that half bad boy, the acting thing going on. Mega plays the, the kind of like boss, easy E role. Mm. You know what I mean? Suge Knight type, right? Mm. Everyone is so solid to serve the purpose. He yeah. recognised that. Yeah. Lisa was like our, like what Nicki Minaj is to Young Money. Yeah. You understand? So it was a genius move. When I, look, when I looked at everyone, Oxide the Trino, geniuses, bro. People always forget they're a part of so solid. Tell, we need to tell Mega, hey, Mega, yeah, if you're listening to this, bruv, you need to fix that, bruv. You're meant to be here today, bruv. To you're here. meant to be here today. <laughs> Do you know what? To be fair to the guy, funny enough, <laughs> I heard from him for the first time, <laughs> for, for, like, yesterday after three weeks, he just goes missing. But, so it is, yeah, when you understand his character, um, he's a critical thinker, innit? And he's a, he analyses, and, like, even now, you see he's been putting on loads of big shows, the UKG thing, yeah, what yeah, he's yeah. been doing. And see him, he just loves music, bruv. Like how you, like you yeah. say, you love the game? Yeah, he loves he just, the music. Is it, but he's a marketing genius. 
No, that's I mean, what I'm saying. For what he did for you guys, yeah, he's was a unbelievable. That's a joke, bro. Here's, put it here's all something I wanted to ask, actually. It might be for you and Mega, actually, but what would it have been like releasing music now with obviously social media and all this like, pressure, virtual yeah. world? Yeah. Compared to like back in the day, would it have been different? Do you think? Of course it would have. I can't relate, bro. Yeah. When when we got to think about it, when we went number one with Twenty One, bro, people was queued up and oh, the bought physical, that physical physical yeah. copies. So when people tell me about streams and sitting in your house paying ninety nine p on your credit card, and you'd have to leave your house, and now you have got the streaming chart, they got to count all different charts now because it's all different the way they. When I'm hearing the number the, the the units that they're selling to get number ones, I am laughing my head off. I'm like, is that all? Yeah. Are you crazy? Crazy, isn't it? So solid. First week, couple of weeks, 21 seconds, 250,000. That's, that's crazy number to be and number that's one. Crazy actually physically going somewhere. Now, streaming chart this. I'm here like, it's a different time. It's not the, it's not the artist's fault. But someone said J Huss, number one album, 30,000. 30,000. That's crazy. crazy. But 30,000, we was doing in singles. We were singles. 60,000 was silver, 100 gold, 250,000 is platinum. platinum. Yeah. In my house, I don't have nothing in my house but platinums and golds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being yeah. real. Yeah. That's, that's it. I love that, bro. Like, I love that. That is the real. I've got one silver, and that was for Oxide Neutrinos um, single, um, but it still ended up going gold. It was bound for the reload, started off oh, as yeah. silver, and then it went gold. Mm. You know what I mean? That's the only the only thing that but I've within, got on my wall. Israel, within that big group, obviously, I know that you know you're you're obviously good friends now. But I, listen, I can't help but think there must have been arguments and fights and everything all the time because when you're when you got that must testosterone in the room, you all want a piece of the pie. You all want more time on the mic, like. <laughs> <Big old start. laughs> what are you talking about? Nine powerful characters. That's what I'm saying. Harvey, Romeo, Mega Man, Face, Mac, Scat D, Lisa Mafia. So how many actual waters? No, he don't know that. I was going to ask him this afterwards, bro. Ask him. I, how I, many, I know. How many I'll, actual I'll, members? Swiss. Can you name all the members? I've just said them. No, you got more than that. I'm talking. I'm dealing with the the spitters. I'm talking about all of them. Ten, um, can ten. you name, can you name all of them? Yeah, yeah. You got so, you got twenties and thirties. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let me do the MCs. Yeah, Mega Man, <laughs> Romeo, Harvey. Ashley Waters, Scat D, Swiss, Face, Mac, Lisa oh, Mafia, Neutrino. That's, That's a 10. 10. All right. DJs, Oxide, Swiss can DJ too. Oxide, because Swiss is the both. Oxide, Swiss, Dan the Man, TDS, Statics. We sack tackets. I won't put him in so solid. Timeless. You got the gun. Yeah. <laughs> I've said the most, bro. <laughs> no, bro. You got more, bro. You got more. You got, you got more. You got no, more. Say this to me. You got, huh? I'm going to send it over. I'm going to send it no, over. You, I, bro, you, in, in, all of your, in all of your music, yeah. there's 32 people participating in all of oh, your yeah, music. Oh, yeah, not on the whole album, but, yeah. bro, that's because we brought in, like, singers, <laughs> but yeah, they wasn't yeah, necessarily yeah. so solid. 32 people, so that's though. That's yeah. a solid yeah. member. Yeah. Like, yeah. That is an unbelievable amount of people oh, to amazing. be in, involved in oh, one you band. you compare it to... Bro, so solid is exact. Listen, we're it's the same as Wu Tang Clan. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I watched the Wu Tang documentary, That's, that was powerful. I mean, the Wu Tang well. um, series, I was like, brilliant because what was? I good said about you got to watch that. You know, that's a RZA, wicked. That was serious. They directed it themselves, so it's from their brains. Yeah, and I said that is so solid. There's incidents I'm watching on there on their tour bus and the arguments, and I'm going, fuck my life. This is so identical and parallel. It's scary. That's there, scary. there is lots of that. Bro, you need to be doing that. You need to call up Netflix, bro. Oh, don't, no, no, bro, bro. Oh, oh, it's it. Oh, it's in the pipeline. Yeah, as long as, I, as long as I'm at the premiere. It's yeah, not in yeah. the pipeline. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's as long as I'm there, I'm, bro. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna tell you whether it's Amazon or Netflix, but it's one of the two, innit? All right, cool, cool. Yeah, and um, yeah, man, there's gonna be kids playing us, bro. That, bro, that's, yeah, that's no gonna way. be that's gonna be powerful. I yeah, I literally said to what I said to um, I was talking to one of the dads at my kid's school. He's, mean, he's top man. And I said, when the parents watch this, bro, they're going to think I'm a lunatic. Because <laughs> they see my school, I'm like, morning, you right? Yeah, yeah. Morning, nice, miss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be like, oh, God, he, God they carry guns. <laughs> you, know, like, you know what I mean? Like, guns, you know what I mean? Like, Just can't wait to watch yeah, that. Yeah, they're going to be like, like bro. But I, I, was, I was telling him, because obviously you being from South London, so yeah. solid, and me being from North London, Heartless Crew, I said there was a big like rivalry. And then, like, was it Pay As You Go came afterwards? Yeah. Um, was anyone from West London? 
Not, not a, 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 a big crew. Oh. I always say the biggest crews are so solid, heartless, and pay as you go, stroke, roll deep because they changed the yeah, yeah, name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's weird. Like Bushkin's one of my closest friends, con considering he's one of my biggest rivals back in the day. Do you, you know, like, do you know, you don't even know. Bush. Bush was at my, so I, me and me and Bush went to the same school. Yeah. He used to manage the ice cream van. Do you know, yeah, no, I put the legend. ice cream vans in the, in the school playground where you can go and buy sweets and burgers and yeah. everything like that. He used to manage that. But like, I've always liked Bush. Fonty was my barber for like yeah, a, a number of years. But then I remember, do you remember that there was like Camden Palace and um, Coliseum? Yeah. So you guys were at Coliseum a That's lot. And Coliseum was like that was the our club. Home, yeah. That's what they call that was the club home. though. Even though it was in South London. Oh, yeah, the if club, was, if that's you... the one in the documentary, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, if you're at Coliseum, like show. everyone went yeah. there. David Beckham that went there. Right. Idris Elba so, went right. there. Like everyone goes there. If you're there, you're big time, bro. Right. And then our one came afterwards was Camden Palace. That's right. But then these guys never used to like perform that much in North London, did nah, you? No, not a lot. And then, and then we done Temple and, and Camden. Bro, I brought the whole uh, of South there. And then what happened? Camden, we got Shit, murdered. Hundred percent. Protected, Say, me and Bushkin was on a flight to Dubai. Just before. COVID, me and Bush done a show together. He was on a flight. Eight, seven hours to Dubai, in it. Yeah. Bro? Bush goes like, oh, I love you, you know? Because, see me, I'm not wrong and strong, bro. Yeah. I told the man then, when it was all kicking off, I said to the boys, don't clash, clash Heartless, they're a ragga sound. You know me and Romeo didn't want to clash them? Yeah. Because at the time, we had commercial success. So when you're commercial now, you actually lose credibility in the fans because everyone's yeah. like, oh, they're stars. When you yeah. do that, that. Yeah. yeah. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you about that night. It's so on my birthday. May the 1st. Do you know what's say. funny about that? Because mine's on the 7th, so I was there celebrating yeah. as well. Yeah, it's about 1999, 2000, right? That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So imagine this, yeah? So we find out it's all kicking off. Yeah. We've put in this rave. Our promoters put the dance on at Camden. It's my birthday. I've had a party. Like I've done like a gathering at my house. My mum's cooking food for everyone. So Natrino, my stepdad in Battersea, Sugar Ray, was known as the, the big ragga DJ. Yeah. Natrino's come to my mum's and like, no, nah. like to my stepfather, like, Sugar, I need to go in the loft. Cause he had 10,000 right, yeah. ragga records in there. She was like, nah, bruv, why are we, Neutrino's like, I need to get out ragga tunes. Cause Heartless used to play ragga with Garage. So Neutrino's panicking, like he's taking all the best reggae records, like, dangerous, you <laughs> way. You know them tunes, innit? He's trying to kill Heartless's set. Anyway, we've got to Camden. Romeo said to me, boy, I'm not sure, you know. Mega's ignorant, innit? You're what? Yeah. Okay. We're clashing. He's got 50, his hat on as well, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 50 men, 50 of us from South on the in stage. this place. Yeah? There's Heartless and nowhere to be seen. Next year, you know, it started. All my boys are dissing off Heartless. We've all got lyrics to diss them. I said, fuck it, I'm not. But I remember ready. Heartless. I remember you I was in the middle. Oh, yeah, yeah. all of us. They was on the stage. Like, there was like the us. residents, was right? Yeah. I was in there. I was in there. I was in there. So, and then I just remember. It was Bush. I think Bush came in first. That's right. And then he's walking. Yeah, he was walking through. Yeah. He was on a he was on a dance floor, yeah. bruv. Dance floor, yeah. And then like they're standing up there, and he's up there, and then That's, he comes he was around. Watching us. Yeah, yeah. Bushkin told me he was what him and Mighty Mo because Camden used to have balconies. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, he's watching that, like, and we're. Babe. I remember Romeo and the lyric like, if I chop off your head, you'd be headless. If I pull out your heart, you'd be heart like body in them with yeah. bars, bro. But in my back of my head, I'm thinking, and I turn around like this, and Mighty Mo was right on my shoulder there, and then I see Fonty like going behind the decks. But he's kind of arguing, they're kind of arguing with one of our promoters mm. about, yo, you ain't paid, man, did it? So man ain't going on. Yeah. But it, so obviously, man's gone, uh. Yeah. Which is like, Fonty. Bruv, they chatted one lyric, bro. <laughs> you know what they said? I didn't even know there was yardy girls in the rave, bro. <laughs> so imagine this, like, when we're on, all the girls are screaming because it's like Harvey, Romeo, yeah. like, it's all like the pretty girl. Bro, as soon as the Heartless crew went, went, come on, and they chatted one lyric, I just see these yardies come out of pink wigs. Yeah. Like, being gun finger, this is, oh my God, we're going to get killed. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, where were these women kept? Bro, we was getting booed. Bro, they battered us. Yeah. They battered us. And the mad thing about it, what do we have to do, South Tipple, because we can't take losing? All the goons just started fighting. Yeah. Bro, they, 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 I remember they, that, 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 the rave got locked yeah, off. Yeah, got locked off. They played two songs. They, they, and it got they battered done. us with two songs, bro, yeah? Two, like, four lyrics. EMC is alive. And yes, he's alive warning, the warning, one. warning. See what I said to Mighty Mo, because he's the most peaceful guy, yeah? Imagine that Mighty Mo was a school teacher, bruv. I went to his school to go and talk to kids. And I'm saying to the, the kids at his school, I'm like, was it. I'm like, do you know who your teacher is? <laughs> and the kids are looking at me like this. Because Mo's all about blessings, the peace and love. Well, that's what he does now. He's yeah. so humble. Yeah. yeah. I was like, and I'm saying, no, 
Your teacher's a warlord. <laughs> and it, the guy, my was laughing. I'm like, your teacher's a warlord. Like, when it comes to bars... Yeah, he's got some serious bars. My mum talking Arabic, bro, and finish you off. He, he, was, he was saying some things, and I was like, what have this guy... Because you know what the thing is? Back in the day, you guys had bars, right? Yeah. But... There wasn't many MCs that had bars. You know, like there's other like MCs that was out there. You know, like yeah, that, that, you know that and all that kind That's of stuff. Commercial. But it was it was commercial stuff. Yeah. Whereas you guys actually had bars and were going at each other. But I loved that. And then I think because of that, again, yeah, because of you guys, all of a sudden Heartless Crew now is kind of going a bit mainstream. And then and then um, Roll Deep and and Wiley they're going a bit mainstream. Well, Heartless Crew and Bushkin will say this. They got their record deal based off of what we done. Yeah. So all the labels thought, oh, they can do what So Solid done. But see, oh, this is what you've got to understand. So Solid, we are lyrical and we, we make strong records. Heartless wasn't great at no, making no. records, bro. That's with, no, with no disrespect, they had the Heartless thing. But it's true, though. But Why was, was it different? Why, they what did they master? They just wasn't album artists, no, They were more like... They are Do you know, like, there's rappers? Do you know, there's, like, now, there's rappers the that are kind of mainstream and then there's other rappers that are, like, hood and thuggish. Yeah. But they, they like, kind of... They're like more, they relate to the streets more. Yeah, they, you know? To me, they're a sound. They're yeah. a ragger sound. Yeah. And a, that turned into garage. So when it comes, if you want to rave, laying down, and you want atmosphere, oh, heartless of oh, your guys. Yeah. But no one could make hits like So Solid. We was, off, we was built of a different cloth. Our records are timeless classics. We just done Southport Festival Friday. Yeah, I see that. That was yeah? a little buzzing, bro. Love. Like every. Even Bugsy Malone was there and all that, and they stayed all, they was like, bro, these are the goats, but. Yeah, because yeah, you bring energy, funny, you bring energy though. And you know what it is? None of them, none of them can perform like us, bro. Like when I came off the stage, there was that, I love him, that new kid from Manchester, Jordan McCann. The, okay, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've and then him. another youth called Trems, and he's all the new kids, and they come off there and they was, he was just looking at me like. In awe. Like, bro, like, you're my childhood, bro. Like, and I've watched it live. It's funny, actually. You know like, what I, mean? I remember growing up and my brothers and sisters are older than me. And I just remember them playing, is it Pure Garage CDs? Yeah. Yeah, like them on the... On the that was all. That was like, EZ's the C- compilation, yeah, yeah, Pure yeah. Garage. Yeah, right? and uh, obviously you guys are on there. And obviously, I'm be, I'm go, I'll go places now and tunes still play. Yeah. Uh, tunes still play Brothers, occasionally. Yeah, even though they come about, they're timeless. Bro, they're timeless, timeless. classics. They're timeless. Like, I went to Manchester, like, the next day. I got invited to go to um, Club Live. The manager went down me. And, bro, like... I was curious, like, people will not leave this guy alone. Because it, it was, this is the nice side of your career when you're in your 40s, because all it was was just guys and women like, bro, thank you, thank you. Yeah. It's not Appreciation, isn't it? Like, it was just like, talking to like loads of cool dudes, man, like, just thank you for what you've done, and you brought memories, and these songs, and they're really enough songs, they haven't really enough songs to me, I forgot. Mm. I remember when you done that, comp- you and Swiss done that compilation, and I'm like, sometimes when I like, you see now, I proper appreciate it. Because when I see my kids, yeah, and I see the legacy, like, and my son is four, I thought six. And all that, the other day I come home, I'm like, I'm like, ha ha ha. They got my video on, on the big TV. <laughs> and son they know 21 well. seconds. It's but then funny. he wasn't, bro, my son and daughter wasn't even a sperm cell when that song was made. That's exactly. so, scary, that, and it's weird. You get me? My son, I come home right now, my son said to me, Dad, did you sing 21 seconds? Yes, son, for the thousandth rotted time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's saying that, you see, when you're a timeless group and your music travel, when we're dead, the, tune was, the tunes will still play. But you know what the funny thing yeah. is? Like I always say it's this: mad. like at that, t- you don't know that you're going to be timeless until you've lived. But, but bro, you don't understand it until you lie in your bed. Do you know what I'm saying? It's weird. See now, I lie back, and now I really appreciate it. And I go, you know, all I say is thank you, God. Yeah. Like thank you for getting me, like for what you made me see, for what you gave me. I even thank you for the fucking tough times when I was like. What was the hardest times? Do you think, like in that? You try that and go, you try and go into bed, yeah, in the whole of. Everyone, you don't know what's coming at you. This is what I'm gonna try and explain to you, like, yeah? When you're a rapper, more than anything, you're a target. When you're a rapper, you don't know who your enemies are. Imagine that, what that would do to your mental health. Sometimes like, I'd have cars just roll up on me, like, you don't know whether they want beef, whether they're fans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You understand? I watched the interview of Tony Ayo, 50 Cent, and he said, he said the same thing. So when you're a rapper, you need to know your geographics, bro, because everyone wants to try you. It's I've got true, to go, yeah. I'll go to Manchester when it was in the peak of our time. Manchester Goons want to fuck with you. Johnson, Burger, but everyone wants to test you. Yeah. Because your music, to them, is hard music, innit? Like, yeah, I'm going to show you you're not yeah, bad. Yeah. Bro, it just brought paranoia, my bro. Mm. But that's, that's, that's the thing. Paranoia I, talk talk never... a little bit about that, Harvey, because 
mental health, especially in this day and age, is a massive, massive thing. They could survive, thing. bro. These kids could survive. And this day. is the thing. Like, I feel like, again, we talk about it, eras, hardships, growing up. I think now a lot of this generation are pampered a little bit. 100%. Protected a little bit more. 100%. Um, but I think, how do you think we could help kids, you know, evolve better and be mentally strong yeah. without experiencing these bad situations? It's hard, yeah, because you're trying to give them guidance, and some of them are... I've seen it with a lot of the young rappers, too. They think they know it all. Mm. And I'm like, you ain't got a fucking clue. Do you understand? But you're trying to guide them to avoid certain problems. So I'm only going to relate to rappers that are my friends that actually listen, and I see you that successful. Stormzy, my little bro. Mm. I knew he was going to be a star. Stormzy, bro, we're coming at you, bro. We, got need come, we need to come here. <laughs> yeah. Hollow your boy, I'll yeah? speak to him. <laughs> he got it straight away. He got it. But he went mainstream as well, yeah. didn't he? Young, Done really well. Good lad. Mm. Young, smart. smart. Yeah. And then you get the ones that are ignorant and they think they know it all and they're going to learn the hard way. Mm. And I say to them, they think to themselves, because they, they might earn half a million, they think, oh, mm. we're rich now. Bro, it goes quick, bruv. Quick. Yeah, you know. Bruv, I spent so, I was, bro, I was spending about, <laughs> I was Jay, spending about three grand a week on, you know. on alcohol and I wasn't even a drinker. You know, mm. you know, you know. Bro, man's, same as Jay says, Mills, this has passed through all the accounts, bro. But if you don't have the guidance or learn how to manage it, like now I say to Utes now, I'll go to Utes. All right, Harvey, you got money? Yeah, but do you want to hear the joke now? My accountant pays me a wage, so I'm smart. Because you've got to think of the tax, man. So you say, that money there is your life. Don't think about that. That money there, I'm going to pay your wage like a normal work, man. It's true. Because all you need to do is pay your mortgage, look after your kids. If I need to go on holiday, I've got to ring my accountant, like, send me that. Send me the money, yeah. Because what you've done, what I learned when I had bad advice back in the day and all this, and I've done one year, we done like, I've done about 1.2 million in a year. And then the tax man came for me for 400 grand. I didn't even have that in my bank, blood. I was like, oh, well, it's true. It's true, you know, it's true what, what you're you, saying. You from, a, from a young age, then, like, this is something I want to ask. How did that affect you? Did you just go out splashing, or yeah. was it like, yeah? Splash, bro. Yeah. Because you didn't have guidance then. Mm. And like, do you know what, as well? One thing I would say, do you know yeah. that? We're from the street, right? So, like, when you get money, you want to show that you've got the money. You're damn you know? right. You're stupid. You want to show it. Mm. That's the thing. And I think I think at schools now, yeah, we, we spoke about this earlier, Trey. Yeah. At schools now, they don't teach you enough about what life and what you need. The education system that kids are learning right now is the one they've been earning since I was at school. That's correct. And no, no, you don't need that now. You need to know about coding, like we said. You need to know about the money. internet, AI, money, Bro. investment. Like, you need to learn about that. Mm. You, you know what I mean? People just got to understand that, like... Like, even religion, even religion. Everything. Religion's a big thing, right? Everything. It's a big thing. But to be honest, I think... I don't think you need to learn about religion at, like, 12 and 13 years old. No, not at all. You know what I mean? I think when you really understand what religion you would believe, because it's a personal decision... That's correct. You need to be an adult and understand the world and That's the right. way you want to think about things and your life. Mm. You no, know, I that, think it's... That are too young, isn't too it? Young. Too young. It's just too young. You, you're not... I think... You know, everyone's going to learn, isn't they? You know, you can't... It's, a hard, it's unfair to say to a kid, like, you sh they're not going to know everything, bro. Because that'd be unfair. Look at the mistakes that we made. Do you understand? The kids are going to make mistakes. But try and make your mistakes minimal. So a lot of the boys that ring me for advice, the artists that are good, you know, in the days of Stormzy's, the young'uns, the, um... Screw are These are all good lads, man. I'd help them any time. Like, Screw Fizzer rang me the other day and said, Uncle, thank you for everything, bro. It's like, everything you said, bro, has happened. I said, bruv, that's because I've lived it. And so I just, I give you these, 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 uh, this advice for precaution. Some of the things I'm telling you to do is not to do it because I've fucking done it. What, 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 what more guidance do you need? Bro, no one in music is to be trusted, bro. People still No listen. one in music. Not really? one record label guy. Like agents, like football agents. They're not to be trusted. I'm Everyone's so got their agenda. Yeah. He bumped into my manager, Albert, coincidentally, innit? Yeah. He's <laughs> him and his wife, coincidentally. Albert will tell you. Do you know what the thing is? I remember I met Albert. This is me. Who's this geezer? Yeah. And he's telling me... One of the most powerful me, guys in music. If, if, but do you know what? Because you never spoke about him too tough yeah. to me. That's what he said. Oh, I represent Harvey. Straight away, I was like, oh, who's this guy? Yeah, text me. Yeah, I straight mean, away. One of the most powerful... Because, you know, everyone said, I represent him. Yeah. Oh, he's my boy. He's this, he's that. And why then it's like... Why is it like that music? Like, why is it so dirty like it's that? It's dirty, man. And you with Albert. I sacked Albert, bro, back in the day, yeah? And that was mad. I done it because I was paranoid of everyone. See me, when, I, when I'm paranoid, I get rid of you. Get rid kidding. of them, go so on. So I don't. And that's mad. You got to yourself now. I'm back with them for years. His son is my business partner for the sports company. They're the ones that's elevated me. 
to where I, where I am today. And one time I sat there, Albert, I said, Albert, sorry. Just fucking know, Harvey. No, sure, man, we might have to do some business together as yeah, well, Harvey. Yeah, he's proper. We haven't really spoke about that either, have yeah. we? Doing some business together. Yeah, it's all right, man. You, you, <laughs> we you can do mean? something. <laughs> you, know, you know making money is my language, man. So, <laughs> Makes money, these, it makes sense. Yeah, these people are like... Like, even the other day, I ran... I ran there was, we had an incident. There's a business incident. And I was talking to Albert. Albert, how should I handle this? And Albert, I go, H? And I was, in, I was in Holland. I went to go and see Patrick Van Arno in Eindhoven. It's in my hotel. We had some, some politics with a, with a company. And Albert said, Harvey, as I've always told you, you never hold emotion in business. It's true. Never lose your call. Cool, never get angry. It's business. And Albert said, this is how you construct. That's so hard, though, Harvey, yeah. like when it comes to money. But when you, when you learn it, when you learn it, and I realise it, bro, I get more people being calm, bro, because I already know you're intimidated by me. I know, you see, since I've become, I don't even like using the word agent, because I don't like that word. Mm -hmm. Since I've become a representative of players, mm -hmm. I see the intimidation from managers. I see it straight away. When I walk into a room, they're all frightened, because they know that they, can't, they ain't got the power that I've got. Yeah, yeah. But I go in there calm. Yeah. Even when sometimes they're going, oh, that player's not for me, I'll be like, no problem. That's, that's, that's more scary. And that, that, that scares them, because I'll yeah. be like, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. And that's how you got to be. Because now, when I'm walking in, they see me in non-league stadiums, they don't know what to do. And what I do, I stand behind a dugout on purpose. But that, that's what, that's why. Like, but you, you've got real, real character, yeah. Harv. That's the they don't expect that's, to see that's me. That's one thing I love about you, because yeah. you've got character regardless of the, yeah. the atmosphere you're in, the people you're around. That's you right. could be around politicians, but you're still going to have that same kind of character, which is infectious. I love that. Yeah, it's got to be. Jay-Z said it, yeah? I don't change my character for no one. Yeah. Any deal that I've... Jay-Z's like, when I've done big deals with Tidal, Millions, this is who I am. Don't expect me to sit in front like of some like you know a white man or a Asian man and act different. Yeah. I don't need to start being like, okay, so um, <laughs> you know what I mean, bro? Well, I've the done mask the up. so solid. We've done the biggest deals in history being ourselves. Well, I've, like I've sat in a room with Sony and the, and, the, and the guy has gone like, you know, we're gonna give you a million pound for twenty one seconds, but we want to change the production on it. All right, mate, keep your million pound. Take care. Go. On. You mad? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when, they, when, they, when, they, when in companies like yeah. that, they think they, they, like, like, you they think, think that, yeah, they think they house. can intimidate you. Yeah. Some, some house buddy like, oh, thank you for the opportunity, bro. Keep your million. Yeah. Because hear the joke. We went down the road and signed to Relentless for two hundred fifty thousand. People thought we was mad, but you know why? You do realize when they give you an advance, you have to recoup that money back. So imagine you're recouping on a deal worth a million pound. How does that actually work then? So you they're, get they're given them advances. Yeah. But you spent the thing is back then. So you as well, get given a mill. If you don't have the. Yeah. And then you wait a period of time. You've got to give a meal back. Yeah, but it'd be like your sales. So, yeah, so of the records. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's um, not like you don't really have to pay. It's not like you're paying them back a meal like a bank, but if they get off your sales, yeah, your yeah, publishing, yeah. whatever it but is. The thing is, you might spend that. You might go through that. If you're stupid, you'll go through that advance quick. Easily. And then you've got no money again. And then you've got your money to live off and then you've got your money to make your album. But here's the joke. We signed to Relentless for 250. Bro, we recouped that off one song. Who was laughing? So what was our profit? Yeah, 21 yeah. seconds. Millions. Yeah, yeah, the label yeah. was going, right, these guys are geniuses. That's why we was never in debt, bro. It, never in it, debt. Here's a question I've got. Um, I mean? Obviously, you've been through some adverse moments, and I def we'll definitely have some kids listening to this in terms of golfers from my side. Golfers have bad, round, bad rounds of golf. It's like having a bad match in football. Or How do you... What's, the, what's your process for getting over these adverse moments? Like, something that's gone wrong, mental health, like... What do you have a process, or what could you give advice to a younger person to get over adversity? Big thing, what they say, yeah. See, the mind is a very powerful thing. So, a lot of situations you make big in your head, and what people do, you're reactional to emotion, aren't you? When you're when you're young and you're transitioning, the best thing to do is go home and sit down and evaluate everything. I think how, think why you got into that situation, and how and how you're going to come back from it. A lot of things where we make mistakes is done on emotion, and there's no thought process. So, for example, you get released from a football club. A kid thinks his world's over. Yeah. You get dropped from your record label. It's all emotional. You start blaming people. Oh, they didn't do that. Or they didn't do this. They didn't do it. Sometimes you have to look at yourself too. And also, when you get put in a situation where someone tells you no, yeah, you that's the end though. Yeah. That's not, not the world's no. That's it. Remember, football and music is based on opinion. Same as go golf as well. And golf. Opinions. All of it. Yeah. So Jay could have went, say for example, he could have went to Swansea and they would have been like, you're not for us. Go down the road to Malky, fucking Makai, and, he, and he's like, you're, but you're for us. It's mm. an opinion, bro. One person's opinion is not the fucking full destiny to your life, bro. Do you understand? No, I told you about, um, what's his name, Mick McCarthy? 
Yeah, we'll see him. Don't like that guy. There you go. Don't like it. My, his brand of football didn't suit me. There you go. I respect myself. I know my worth. I end up going somewhere. Playing for Eng England, three years later, I'm playing for England. England. He must feel like a right arsehole. Well, there you go. How do you reckon he feels There you now? go. I don't know, man. He gives it the big licks yeah. on TV. But there you boy. go. I don't give a shit, bro, what anyone thinks about me, bro. See me, I'm thick-skinned, bro. And that comes with years of experience. And because a lot of people spend half of their time worrying about what other people think. Bro, do you pay my bills, bro? <laughs> do you go, do you feed my kids? Do you go through my daily struggles in my house? Lie on yourself, right? But, bro, so why am I relying on you? That's what I say to anyone. When someone comes up to me and goes, I've really got affected by what someone left on the internet. Yeah. Do they pay your bills? Bro. People don't have to do with me. It, my, one of my mates said, this is genius. So prime example, if someone goes on the internet, which I wake up to abuse every day, because you always get, remember, you you know, it's the roller decks or thing. People didn't have to do with it. I left this message one time and I said, please send me more hate. It turns me on, it gives me a hard on. People was like, <laughs> I never got no messages the whole day. People was like, but yeah, you know, I'm, yeah. a, I'm the same. But, for me, I, I just love people. Do? No, that's interesting because I've spoke to a few people, media people, big media people, yeah. and we've spoke to them together, and they don't know how to deal with social media it's crazy, and isn't it? that stuff. It's crazy, bro. I don't know these people. Yeah, you're sitting in your house in Scunthorpe, dissing me. If, on anything, my phone. if anything, they're helping. That thing you post last night, people commenting abuse under it is helping bro, that video bro, yeah. blow up. You see what I posted? Did you see what? Are I you from Wolves? Yeah. yeah. I knew it. You How do you know that? that? Come you got that way. Yeah, I think we got a mutual friend actually. You know Sheldon? Barber. That's my dog. I was yeah. at Sheldon's house two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Telford. Yeah. We, got, we got a place in Shrewsbury. Oh, have you? Did you cut your hair? Yeah. You Sheldon your... trims my hair, bro. Yeah. If I'm in that area. Sheldon I... trimmed my hair when I was young. I ain't got, got, got to see him then. I ain't got to see him. Yeah. Sheldon's sick. Yeah. So obviously he's like Sheldon's. Um. So my missus family, they're big, bro. You know what I mean? So I used to have a, a flat in Tetanel. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Harva, I know you Man, don't. I know, I know you ain't played golf that much, bro. But we got, we got to have a challenge here. Yeah. Come on, bro. We ready? Have you got to show kids that, bro? Oh, no. You're, 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 you're an icon. You little bastards for this year. Come on, we got to do this. Bro, don't worry, bro. I'm telling you. Yeah. Nine nine is that long distance for you to get get a long distance it's shot? It's kind of mid it's mid range, not... mid okay. eye. I think I think you can get there with with nine eye. But you know what the thing is? You have to get it in between these two things. Yeah, nah. so you see this green nah, nah, line? Nah, nah, you got to <laughs> get this down there, bro. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> but if that picks up the distance in I front of you. I love this show apart from this bit. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've got a green light. Actually, I'm going to move it this way a little bit. Jay's all right, doing the top of that. See, Jay, Jay's cool. all right. Let's see, let's see what you got. Come on, let's just go straight Don't worry in. about it, man. Let's you got to start somewhere, innit? Yeah, no, 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 because it. the light, Jay, blows. Right, no, you're good, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger Woods V3. <laughs> 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 I look the I hate it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you made contact. <laughs> it's down the water. Run me, run you. Run me. Let's go again. <laughs> but you know what? The thing is, when you hit it for the first time, then you'll be like, okay, I like this game now. Yeah. Oh, should we get him going proper? Go on, this is proper now. Yeah. All right. Right, keep, you keep what, your eye right, on the ball, hold, just hold, look down, actually, don't look up. So yeah. you see this ball? Yeah. If you point straight there, it wants to be in the middle of your feet. You see it's right on your front foot? Yes. So move both feet this way. Yeah, yeah, that's way better. That's way better. Don't grip it too tight. Oh, you broke <laughs> you Broke the system. <laughs> Where's the ball gone? <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what did that hit? <laughs> Come on, you got this. Come on, remember, remember them feet. This is great for your outtakes, isn't it? This is not outtakes, this is intakes. Yeah, that, that's good. Come on. Oh, I tell you what, Jay. No, 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 Harvey, this is promising because you got, got the strike going. I got, got the strike going. The exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right, Hav. Yeah. This is this is one of your goes now. You've had three practice things. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> Come on. But you know what? Do you know what the thing is? Yeah. Let me be honest with you. I'll be straight with you. Yeah. You know they got a professional golfer there. <laughs> he, he didn't hit the green. Come on. So you, bro, missing the green in the sea and missing that over there is the same thing, bro. Like, missing is missing. I was, I was, yeah, yeah, bro. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hav, don't worry about it. No, don't worry about it. He was, listen, he was good. I've got a PGA goal for Nah, bro, bro. <laughs> Come on. I'll tell you what, hang on, hang on. You see that? Yeah. Point that a bit straight, oh, like that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Go, Jay, Jay. 
<laughs> Man, why are you keep it in the seat for? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's consistency, though. <laughs> Give me lessons now. You right, know. Feet. That's it. Taller. Taller. Yeah, yeah. They. <laughs> <laughs> bend, bend that back. back. <laughs> bend that. Yeah, bend that back. <laughs> that's it. When you take that club back, yeah. feel like does that feel different? It feels alright, to be fair. That's where you go. So it needs to be a little bit oh, more open. Yeah. As At you the go back. back. Straight, 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 straight. But, but that's, yeah, if you get, bro, you get, if you don't go past the ladies' tees, bro, you've got to do 10 press ups. Oh my god. Oh, sorry. Past the who? Huh? The, the ladies' tees. The ladies' tees here, isn't it? No. Ah, uh, no, nah, bro, why yeah. are you straight? Nah, it's a little big, it's been a Oh. Oh. Do you know what I'm thinking? If that was straight. I'll tell you what, Jay. If that was straight. Considering he hasn't played, the strike is nearly there. Do you know what the thing I is for me? I'm going to be honest with you. If I'm, I'd be, I'm not joking now, yeah? yeah? When I first started, that was Seriously? me. I yeah. swear down. It's like I've got a girlfriend over there. Why does he go over there? <laughs> the magnet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Okay. Stretch, we could give him one more tip, actually. Let's what? give him one more tip. Because yeah. you're, you're the coach. So, as a lefty. So when you. I know. That's consistency, when though, you isn't it? That, if you stand here, I'll stand there, huh? Stand when you went through. He won't hit you. He won't hit you. When you went through. Yeah. You kind of pulled the club know, a long it. way that way. It's got to feel like it goes like yeah, out. Right. In imagine, that do, you know, do you know for you? Imagine you're hitting in that corner. Yeah. You know, like way into that like left yeah. side. Come on, let's Still do another. Let's do another. Oh, there you go. Oh. That was unlucky. <laughs> that was unlucky, though. You did. And do you know what? You, you ended up in that. He ended up in that bunker. Yeah, yeah that's that my straight bunk. to me, yeah, man. It I, felt good as well. Now the tick is hardest cruise in there. Push it behind him. Push it. Push it in there, isn't it? Yeah, my dear guy. Nah, that was wicked. Ob, right? You going? This is our leaderboard, Harvey. You gonna go next to me, Dan? Actually, I'll let you go above me. He's a legend. There you go. go. There you go. I'm still at the bottom. <laughs> still at the bottom. He's in the bottom. He's in the bottom. Never gonna bunk live down, you know, I'm never going to live down. All right, here's a question I got. Um, and it's one that I like to ask a few people, actually. Obviously, golf is a sport that you probably wouldn't generally get into, mm -hmm. like, especially in London, yeah. in the city. Why did you, why? For you specifically, would you have not have seen golf at an early age, or why have you? Is there any stereotypes where you felt you couldn't play golf, or was it just not on the map? Was it not something you considered? I wouldn't even say that. It's probably that. Um, yeah, being in a, 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 a city boy in South London, um, it wasn't obviously prominent then. It wasn't like the cool thing to do. But obviously, when I signed my first pro contract and you're around footballers all the time, that's what they bloody do, <laughs> as you know. So it was a kind of thing that I used to go to the golf days yeah. and sit at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll never forget when we used to have days off at football, particularly when I was at like Barney and things like that. And a lot of, do you remember Dougie Friedman and Dougie? Dougie, Dougie, yeah. Dougie, Dougie is quality. And uh, Dougie's a good lad. And them lads would be like, you know, like, oh, you know, day off, oh, golf. And I'd be like, good for your day off, bruv, because you won't see me at no golf, golf course. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And um, and it wasn't really, a, a, you know, a football thing to play dominoes at football, was it? So, <laughs> 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 do you know what I mean? But yeah, it, obviously I was around it. And I love golf days and I love the environments and I love, I love golf dinners. It's a big part of my world. You know, I've got a big charity dinner yes. for Team Harvey Woody's got next year and we're going to do it at a golf course, yeah. of course. Um, I like the days, but in terms of my involvement and the enjoyment for it, I just never really enjoyed it as much as I enjoy but, playing but tennis. I'm a, I'm a tennis if, man, you know, I go and play tennis see, twice if, a week. Say you went to golf and you filmed it, for yeah. example. Kids see that. You would have no idea how many people that inspired, you know. Yeah, like, 100%. Right, like right now. But if my yes. son said to me now, you know, I'm dad, I want to play golf. See, I'm a sportsman. It's a part of my DNA. So it wouldn't be um, abstract to me. Yeah, yeah, it, that's, yeah. He just took, took an interest to golf and I would support that movement. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't look at it like, you know, uh, funny enough, if, I, if you actually look at my kids now, my, do my daughter has probably got more potential to be a professional woman footballer than my son at this precise moment. Because like, she can strike a ball, great, great technique. She loves the game. Every minute she's nicking her brother's football kits. So I've now got to buy two football kits. But she's actually got good technique. Touch the ball, That's get the ball one. out of her feet. She moves the ball well. 
and now she goes football on Sunday. So you can't just be stereotypical in this present day and age. Think you know we're going. We've got sons. We're not sons to be footballers. Don't miss out your daughter. Yeah, you have to give them opportunities. Do you understand? Because now, now, like we said, we've got a market now where we, how it should have been. We've got you know it's on an even pedestal. There should have been girls teams from back in the day. Why are you just funding funding their football now? That's why I kind of like what Ian Wright does for it and things like that. So I just embrace talent, man. Sport, sports. Do I like about sport is a, is it saved a lot of lives, man. Especially for us inner city kids, especially from the areas that me and Jay's grown up in. Jay, Jay growing up in the Gaza, North London. I growing up in the Gaza in South London. You know, as well as your reality, Jay would be scoring a hat-trick on the weekend for Cardiff and then find that his, his friend got killed in Tottenham. Yeah. That's our reality. You understand? That's what I said, right? My missus said something so deep to me the other day. So good she went. Because um, my missus is one of the top mental health nurses. And she went to me, you know you've got you've got PTSD. Because of all the trauma that you've gone through with your life, the so solid experience, getting stabbed, stabbed yeah. um, things that you've been through. And I and I turned around because I have self-understanding of my body and understanding of my life. I said, You're right. Because remember, certain things would affect you. You know, you we've all got individual things in this room that's affected us. We raised through family, things that's happened in your career. We've yeah. all got past trauma. Trauma's not there to be used as an excuse. But I'm talking about these are things that affect you. Like, if you've got a bad relationship with one of your parents, or I always say to my friends, like, me and my father don't talk. But I give people understanding of why we don't talk. I'm yeah. not bitter to the situation. But these are things that, you know, things that you've been through with your parents or things that you've been through in life, you make sure you don't repeat with your kids. How can I ever that, didn't you? I understand? That, man. I just remember like, I, my biological dad, I remember him busting up my mum. Right, right. I remember, like... Right. In fact, every I don't I mean I never see him. He's died now, so yeah. But even then, like, I don't, if I'm being honest, I didn't I didn't my step my stepdad is my real dad. Well, me and you both. Do you know and what I'm saying? So for me, like I didn't, I didn't even care about that. Exactly. And Leanne, my stepfather was a big influence in her life too. Ray Ray Henry, you know everyone knows Ray from Battersea. Yeah, because these we used to be we used to be we used to have a sports center that we used to go to. Me Leanne Battersea Sports Center. This is when she was coming through as a young girl. Do you understand? And my stepfather ran the sports center, Ray Henry. Like I said, he's behind myself. He's behind Sean Davis. He's behind Clinton Morrison. They Sh all... Sean Davis is a baller yeah, as well. It was a joke. Yeah. They all, all of them, they know. See, when Ray passed away, the funeral, the woman at the hospital, St. George, said, who is this guy? You've got platinum musicians walking in. You've got ex-Premier League footballers walking in. You've got Sean leaving Fulham shirts. Clinton, pay, the, all the, all the boys came together and paid for my stepfather's thing. Do you understand? There's that for the funeral. There's the flowers. Because he was a big influence on their life. Who would have who would have drove um Sean to all these games when Sean got released from Wimbledon for jumping the taxi? People don't know these things. He went on to play, play in the Premier League, be one of the best midfielders in the Premier League. Clinton, look at Clinton now. Sky Sports pundit, amazing career, played in the World Cup. That's my stepfather behind all of them. Because we didn't have the resources of our mums like, well, we, you're gonna get driven everywhere. Yeah. Ray was our was the ghetto dad. Oh, you got a game? All right, Sean, I'll drive you Fulham. Harvey, I'll drive you Chelsea. So I, I always say yeah. that people, you know what the thing Big is? It's funny how those, those little things back in the day, yeah. they, they stick with you throughout your career, throughout your success. Do. Because like for me, like my stepdad, he came into my life and was like, he wasn't one of them stepdads that pushed me into football, mm. but he always took me to games and everything. And once right. I got into it, he, he supported it. He would take me to the park, just me and him practicing. That's right. And those are the little things, things you'll never forget, I man. Never forget, the little, yeah. the, and I want to take into my son's life. Yeah, the you little I mean? details, man. The little details. And everything that I've, I, I've suffered or I've been through, my kids will never suffer them things. To see my children in my world, and I also want them to be free spirits. Like, to know, like, anything you want to do, go for it. That's interesting, because I'm, I'm, I'm the mean? same. Like, my, I only know fatherly figure through a stepdad. So, like, it's taking weird. me to golf, us, all three of us. Yeah. My mum, my grand taking mm. me to golf and football when I was younger as well, stepdad. It was a help from everybody taking me these places. And it's like, I'm not a dad yet, but I can start to put some of that stuff into that thought process. Yeah. Do you know what's amazing about it? And I was having this conversation with, um, with Hayden yesterday. Now, you've got to think to yourself, people like Jane Hayden, the amount of league games they played and whatever, and Hayden was, a, you know, played in the Premier League. And his son is now playing in all the shots first team. Like, he's, he, he, he signed a contract this year. They, was, they, they were going to send them on loan. He's hit the ground running so good, he shot them. He's now going to be their regular third centre off. Wicked. But you see what's good about Hayden? Hayden always used to say, like, what we do to our kids. Don't you feel any pressure of what I've done? 
We're two different entities. Yes, I'm your dad. But don't feel because I played for West Ham and Palace, you've got to play 600 games. Be your own man. Yeah. Be who you are. I say that to my kids. Don't Listen, if you don't want to sing, my son doesn't have to go and sell 8 million records like his dad. He already has the template of success. He sees it every time he walks up the stairs and sees platinum albums down the stairs. But I don't put pressure on my kids to emulate what I've done. I'm like, be whoever you want to be. And whatever you do, I'm going to support it. But one, wicked, one thing I do say to them is, whatever you do, you fucking give 100%. Yeah. Whereas don't step on a football pitch, don't step into entertainment, don't step on an acting set, unless you're prepared. You're prepared. Because it takes character. It takes perseverance. For you to be at this level as a golfer, that within itself, a black man too. Yeah, Because no, yeah. it's not a black man sport. It was like, yeah, we can go Tiger Woods when it... You know what's funny, though? Uh, just, quick, just quickly, to wrap I, I'm going to ask you, but I don't think there's a black English golfer on the DP Tour, is there? Where? where? DP World Tour. Where? I'd have to do some when real young, deep research. When exactly. I was young, it was Nick Faldo and Seve Ballesteros. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when Tiger Woods came out, I was like... But, but, like, you, but you know, when I ask, ask you that to, question, to why you didn't play golf, it's probably because there wasn't anybody that's that right. looked like you that played golf. Yeah. And that's why I kind of do what I do now with TV yeah. and stuff as well. And you can I afford, think about who can that afford golf? Yeah. Like, no, I'm saying like... Uh, no, no if you're it's in a middle-class sport hub. You know, my mate, uh, he was an England international rugby player, Paul Saki. And I said, Saki, your brothers were from the bits and you went and played for England international. I said, what made you do that? He says, my mum because she knew that I could play rugby. And she sent me to a private school that specialised in rugby. Because, and my mum was doing like two, three jobs to pay the fees. But she wanted him to be around that circle because she knew to do it. And he rewarded her by being an international rugby player and playing for Wasp Harlequins. Because, see football? Football's in the city. So we, where you get lucky with football, it's not a rich man's sport. You can go to your local you sports centre. You can go anywhere. Around, and someone scouts. Tennis ball, some scout, anything. All of us got scouted in the hood. When I actually got scouted by Chelsea, I played for West London. And we was all ringing bells. Sean, Clinton, Junior Harvey, Byron, Glasgow. Remember yeah, Byron? Yeah, yeah, I remember Byron. We was all ringing bells. So then the scouts came for us. But that was, they came for us in the hood. Like, you'd have scouts, Fulham well, scouts. On the, on the street, like, yeah. kicking ball in a Bro, cage. Danny Jack, there was scouts. A guy called Danny Jacker at Fulham. You never know. Find, he came to Battersea Sports Centre to find Luke and Sean. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think, the, I think the, thing, the thing about football is, like you said, Golf is a, a wealthy, I mean, a middle-class sport, right? You've got, to, you've got to buy clubs, they're expensive. You've got to buy balls, they're expensive. You've got That's to pay correct. for lessons. You've got to pay to play on a course. You've got to buy golf attire. Like, it's all cost. Where football, I mean, I was blessed um, that I've been in the game and I had 23 years, but yeah. it all started from me kicking the tennis ball around, and throwing my school bag on the floor, making a goal out like of that literally. with my mate. You see that his youth it. team? I'll never forget the impact, because they was, they was, what are you now, Jay? 40. Yeah, so Jay's, 41, sorry, 41. Yeah, so he's three years younger than me. So another one of my good friends, his friend, who played Jerome Thomas, and that team that you lot had. Unbelievable. What, what, I, I remember watching that team because they showed, remember your game started, the game started to be played on Sky, yeah, do you right, remember? Yeah, yeah. That when you lot won it that year. FA Youth Cup, 7-2. I'll never ever forget this. 7-2, 6-2. I looked at this team and I said, this Arsenal team at the time of these lot, they were like Brazil, bro. <laughs> we was, I told you, we were spanking teams, bro. Was Ben Chorley in that team too? Yeah, yeah, Ben Chorley. We was, ben Chorley, do you know what, Ben Chorley, I love Ben Chorley. Ben Chorley, he was in and out of the squad, but then he, he kind of made it into yeah. our youth team. But he was, even Ben, Ben was a top player, yeah, but he was on the bench a lot. Yeah. That's, that's how good our team the was. The best youth teams I've seen. Everyone talks about the Man United yeah. youth team, but our, our youth team is up there. Oh, but your youth team was a joke. Our, you, that team and the Palace team with Hayden, Clinton Morrison, Saji Burton, yeah, Danny Boxall, Tony yeah, yeah. Foley. Do you know thing, and do you know what the thing about that team Gareth was? They had them players, they were good, but then you had the big, like, the big black guys that were just athletic Literally. and strong. That's, that's what yeah. we used to struggle with. The games yeah. that were hard for us was the ones when you're playing against yeah. fast, powerful players. Do you know the best player I've ever played against, yeah? And Me. forget when I went when I went non-league. I played in... So this was... I was at, um, at the time, I went on loan to Kingstonian at that time. And we always used to play Chelsea in pre-season. So the first half, yeah, you'd, now you'd call it they played their 23s, yeah. yeah? Second half, yeah? So you know pre-season, you play two halves. Yeah, yeah. So I played the second half, yeah? So, so I've gone, why did I have to get the second half, yeah? So I've gone in the tunnel, yeah? It's like Michael Jubri, Zola, Andy Myers, all there? Jody <laughs> Morris, yeah? And then and Viali, <laughs> yeah? And I'm like, why would you do this to me? Bro, Zola sent me for bun and cheese. I didn't know what time. I, I didn't know what time of day it was, bro. Levels. And I'm playing left back, innit? Bro. 
I think, do you know before people even knew about, George, remember when George Ware invented the Tic Tac? Yeah, yeah. And he got like this. Zola done things to me, low sense of gravity. Yeah, I didn't even know it existed, bro. Like, I remember one, one point, I don't even know I've done it, my manager was like, show him inside. Like, why would you tell me that in Zola, yeah? Someone switched the ball to him. And I'm obviously, I'm playing fullback. So naturally, as soon as he's getting switched, you're going you're gonna go go to go to close place. him down, isn't it? Bro, my man craved on his touch. So he didn't go, he didn't go like, pop and then play. And my man went, boom, and I went, oh, wow, where am I? Like this, and then <laughs> and I went back again, and my man went, and I went, oh, where am I again? Like this, I went, I went, bro, do you know the whole half? You dizzy after. Do you know the whole half? We, the, our team, we touched the ball four times. <laughs> I swear to God. And then I tried to do like a fool. I bombed forward once and tried to run Michael Jubry. No, nah, bro, he got thrown into the stand. <laughs> God. <laughs> God. God. <laughs> me, nah. And that's when I realised the high level of football. Because I said, nah, these men are different. When I used to watch Jay players, I said, nah, these youths are different. These youths are different, man. He was it's so hard. cultured when he played with you. Yeah. The most cultured black player I've ever seen. So it's not just sick. You but know what I mean? tell you, but the thing for me, I mean, I still, we always talk about this now, yeah. but I mean, I, I achieved everything I wanted to in the game, but had my attitude been right, had I had, you know, a better support system from the club, yeah. then I would have played at higher heights. 100%. But listen, half man, thanks for coming Anytime, down, bro. Anytime, man. It's been so listen, you know, you know, my, it's Oh, yeah, and I got your new number, yeah? Oh, why are you doing that? <laughs> you ain't getting away now, I've got a business bro. account. If someone's, not your fam <laughs> if, someone's not your, if someone's not your family, yeah, would they be at your birthday dinner? Me and him argue more than me and my missus, bro. It's my no, brother. No, we do, we do, we do.